There are moments in human history when a single mind illuminates the world, changing our understanding of the universe forever. These are the light makers. They are the architects of progress, the pioneers of a new dawn. But what happens when the light is brighter than a thousand suns? What happens when the dawn it brings is not one of hope but of blinding terror? This is the story of a man who gave humanity the fire of the gods and in doing so became a destroyer. This is the story of J. Robert Oppenheimer. Julius Robert Oppenheimer was a prodigy, a mind that moved at the speed of life itself. Fluent in multiple languages, a lover of poetry and Eastern philosophy. He was drawn to the nascent, mysterious world of quantum physics, the study of the universe at its most fundamental, invisible level. He wasn't just a scientist, he was a visionary. But as Oppenheimer's star rose in the academic world, a shadow was falling across Europe. The Third Reich was on the march, and with it a terrifying possibility that the Nazi Germany could unlock the power of the atom first. A letter signed by Albert Einstein warned President Roosevelt that a single atomic bomb could destroy an entire port. The race had begun. To win this race, America needed a miracle. It needed a secret laboratory, a team of the world's greatest minds, and a leader who could orchestrate them. The choice was unlikely. Oppenheimer had no experience managing large projects. He had past associations that made the FBI deeply suspicious. But General Leslie Groves, the military head of the newly formed Manhattan Project, saw something else. He saw a genius. An ambition that burned as brightly as the stars Oppenheimer studied. On a remote Mesa in New Mexico, Oppenheimer built his intellectual kingdom. He gathered the giants of physics, refugees from fascism and homegrown geniuses alike and gave them a singular, terrible purpose, to build a weapon to end all war. He served the world by uniting its sharpest intellects against the existential threat of Nazism. This was his great service, a patriotic, desperate quest to save the world from its darkness. For two years, under the immense pressure of the clock, Los Alamos pulsed with fantastic and frantic energy. Theories were tested, engineering marvels were constructed, and the moral weight of their task hung over everyone. They called their creation the gadget. The moment of truth came in the desert of the Dono al Morado, the journey of the dead. As the final countdown echoed in the darkness, the fate of the world rested on a theory. In that instant, humanity harnessed the power of a star. The light was followed by a shock wave that knocked men to the ground miles away, and then a roar that seemed to tear the skies apart. The test was a success. The weapon worked. But in the mind of its creator, something profound had shifted. He would rather recall a line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, that came to him in that moment. The power to serve had become the power to destroy. Just weeks later, that power was used, first on Hiroshima, then Nagasaki. The war was over. The world Oppenheimer had fought to save was in fact saved from tyranny. Millions of lives, it was argued, were speared from a prolonged invasion of Japan. This was the ultimate culmination of his service. 
yet the cost was apocalyptic. He had built the instrument of that apocalypse. When he met with President Truman, he was a broken man. Mr. President, he confessed, I feel I have blood on my hands. In the aftermath, Oppenheimer became the world's most famous scientist. But he used his newfound fame not to celebrate his creation, but to warn against it. He argued passionately for international control of atomic energy, for transparency, for a world where such weapons would never be used again. He was desperate to contain the fire he had unleashed. But the world wasn't listening. The Soviet Union detonated its own bomb and the arms race began. Washington wanted a new weapon, the super bomb, the hydrogen bomb, a weapon of genocide. For Oppenheimer, this was a line that could not be crossed. He opposed its development, calling it a tool of pure evil. His opposition made him powerful enemies. In the paranoia of the McCarthy era, his past was weaponized against him. The man who had delivered America its ultimate victory was dragged before a security hearing, accused of being a risk. His loyalty was questioned, his character assassinated, he was publicly humiliated, stripped of his security clearance and silenced. The destroyer of worlds was himself destroyed by the very system he had served. J. Robert Oppenheimer's legacy is a paradox of light and shadow. He was a light maker who gave his country a weapon so powerful it ended the world's deadliest war. That was his service, but in doing so, he also gave the world the means of its own annihilation. This is his destructive legacy. He was, in a way, a modern Prometheus who stole fire from the guards and was punished by his deed. His story is a permanent cautionary tale. It forces us to ask, what is the true responsibility of science? And when we create a light bright enough to banish all darkness, can we ever truly control the shadow it casts? And the answer is a loud no.